I see that people are writing in from Winnipeg saying, Jets in a sweep, Jets this, Jets that. You can't win four in a row without, you can't win four at all without winning the first one. How about that? And I think the rest for the Jets is a good thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go Jets tonight to win. I'm thinking Jets will win the series probably in six. It's the first that I've thought about it. Jets in six. That's what I'm saying. This is the Rob oh. Peterson Show. Well, <laughs> how about that? Uh, Could still happen. Oh, yeah. But the Jets to win last night did not happen. Hello, Canada and Canadian sports fans around the world. Welcome to the RP Show on this Thursday, June 3rd, in the year of our Lord, 2021. It's uh, a very special day, as you'll see on the set here. I will hand this over to uh, the lovely and talented co-host and also owner and proprietor of the Rod Peterson Show, Darren DuPont, to tell the folks why you have the set all decorated here today. It's our second birthday. Ta-da! Hey, hey How happy about birthday. That? How about that? June about 3rd, that? 2019. That's right. Was our initial show. Um, but it's funny, I don't have kids yet, yeah. but my friends do. And I've learned that, you know, you make a big deal out of the first birthday. It's the first one. Never had a birthday for your kid before. Second birthday. Not a big deal. It's not a big deal. So, you know, no old clips, no special messages, but we got some uh, donuts, we got some balloons, and we'll celebrate throughout the We're day. all together. That's We're the all main together. thing. Yes. That's the, so thank you to everybody who's made uh, this show a success. And, and there's some nice comments coming in from everywhere. Tell us where you're watching from with that. Uh, Trevor in Winnipeg. Jeff in Calgary. <laughs> Jeff, don't get ahead of yourself. It's coming up in my quick six show topics. What you're talking. Hang on. Joe Lazito on Long Island. All these nice folks with some nice words. So it's our two-year birthday today, and it's fun. And Darren has uh, corralled me into a speech later that I have not even thought about yet. So I don't know what that's going to be. Uh, on the program today, Andrew Hustler Patterson from TSN Ra- No, formerly TSN Radio Winnipeg. Now, Winnipeg Sports Talk. Hmm, what are we going to talk about <laughs> Yeah, with Hustler? Uh, the Silver Fox, Kelly Rempel in Hour 2, and longtime Toronto Blue Jays broadcaster Mike Wilner coming up in Hour 2. And I'm a really big fan of Mike Wilner. I've never interviewed him before. I've never even met him, so I'm excited for that chat. And uh, Darnell Theros, I just want to say thanks to Darnell from Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions. He's written in. Happy anniversary, guys. Enjoyed every minute. Darnell's been with us and his lovely uh, wife, Roxanne, from the start. They're regulars here in the bunker. They sponsor the rock star of the day, who incidentally was Rich Sutter yesterday. Rich Sutter has so many T-shirts and hats as the rock star of the day. I don't know what he's going to do with all of them. <laughs> I know. He's right? got them for the rest of his life. Oh, yeah. Right? It's so, automatic. And the awesome thing about Rich Sutter is he actually wears that stuff. Maybe it's to shovel manure in the corral. Who cares? He's wearing it. Yeah. Wasn't a joke. How about that? Let's go with a quick six show topics, please, guys. Thank you. Deer Valley Golf and Estates writing in as well. Happy second anniversary RP show from Shane at Deer Valley. A lot of interesting comments. People are just like a bucket horse trying to get out of the stall there, and they, they, got, they got stuff they want to talk about. Oh, so yeah. just hang on. Number one, Montreal five, Winnipeg three. The score doesn't even matter. It was over early, 2 nothing Montreal, 10 minutes into the first period. I don't know what happened. You talk about rest versus rust or whatever you want to say. Montreal was in complete domination of the entire game. But all you had to watch was the last minute. You've all seen it. I wish that we could show the highlight. Maybe one day we will. But here's my take on this. Winnipeg's nets empty. As you all know, Jake Evans of Montreal is racing into the Winnipeg zone. He curls around the net for a rare Wrap around, empty net goal. Mark Shifley of the Jets is going Mach 3 from the Montreal zone to his own zone as fast as he can. And at the top of the circles, he lets up because he saw the goal was going to be scored. And then it was, I feel it was like, a, oop, bang. Where was he going to go? I said it was unintentional. And I know that I've been ripped from pillar to post for saying that it was unintentional. I don't care. I, when, and then Jake Evans gets stretchered off. It was probably the hardest, grossest hockey hit I've ever seen in my life. I wrote down here what Kevin Bieksa said. Not that he's the be-all and the end-all, but here's the direct quote from Bieksa afterwards. We don't know what his intent was. Maybe he had the intent. Certainly doesn't seem like he did. I'll say it again for the slow people. We don't know what his intent was. Maybe he had the intent. Certainly doesn't seem, certainly doesn't seem like he did. 
Kevin BX says, doesn't seem like he intended to hit him or hurt him. I said it was unintentional. That's my belief. He's going as fast as he can. Oh, bang. And then I called an NHL scout this morning, talked to him this morning on my way in here. And I said, what do you think? And he just said, same thing as what Sean Avery said last night. It's the playoffs. Keep your head up. The NHL, who was a, the guy was a dangler when he played, said, if I was tucking an empty net goal in the playoffs, I would have a pretty good idea that somebody was coming. Keep your head up. So I'm still on Shifley's side. We're not talking about Brad Marchand. We're not talking about Tom Wilson. Mark Shifley wouldn't hurt a fly. And the guy was benched coming down the stretch by Paul Maurice for not back-checking. So he finally does, and this happens. So our poll question today is, what's the suspension going to be for Mark Shifley? He's got a hearing this morning. He's probably having it right now with the NHL Department of Player Safety. No games. One to two games or three plus games. And I'm okay with him being suspended. What are they saying, Dupes? Uh, It's pretty tight between one to two and three plus. Yeah. So nobody's 11% saying zero. So I think the common concept, you know, the common. He'll be suspended. He'll be suspended. For how long? Over to you. I thought thought two games would be appropriate. I really do. Um, There's a lot that goes into this. One, Evans knew he was coming. You see him when he's about to circle in it, he does one of these, right? Just a quick check. You know somebody's coming. But in his wildest dreams, did he think he was going to get blown up coming around the net? No. And I look at Mark Shifley. Did he skate 200 feet with the intent to blow this guy up? Not a chance. He skated 200 feet to stop the net. But he got to about the top of the circles and realized he's not stopping the goal. So Yes, exactly. So he, so he lets up and starts gliding, but he's still going so fast, right, that it doesn't matter how much he's let up to glide. And at that point, you're really frustrated. The frustration takes over of allowing the goal. And that's the moment, the moment that empty net goal is about to go. And that's the moment you've accepted that you're losing the game. And that stick over the crossbar, you want to throw your phone against the wall moment. He decided to blow him up and take out the frustration. Do I think he intended to hurt him? No. Do I think he intended to blow him up and let out all of his frustration? Yes. So for that reason, I think he should be suspended for two games because... As a pro, those frustrated moments, instead of putting a hole in the wall, you have to be able to hold back in that moment. You have to be able to hold back and just grit your teeth and take it. He didn't, so that's why I think he'll get it. Um, but it was devastating. It was not good. There's a lot going out, you know, the Nikolai Ehlers thing now where he was protecting Evans afterwards yeah. in the scrum. That was good to see. But uh, I think we're making this a little bit more than what it is. It's a really, really devastating check, and we don't see those anymore. Eh. So we think it's worse than what it is. I don't think we're making too much of it. We don't know the status of Jake Evans. We don't know his health status. That's right. My God, he was limp. Well, and that was the conversation I had this morning, too, is he's now going to feel this forever. It's going to affect him somehow. A big, you know, head injury (sighs) like that. Here's the thing. It doesn't matter what we think, but Mike Horrigan watching on YouTube in Toronto says he should have put on the brakes and he was clearly frustrated as the game was fiery. But that's the thing. I've seen people say, you saw his skates angle. He was trying to slow up. You saw snow come up from his skates. He did try to slow down. But everybody's saying he was not in a good frame of mind, clearly. And then afterwards, you see his eyes. He looked like a wild animal. I think he was worried about Evans. He did not intend... For that result, which was what my point was. It doesn't matter what any of us say. It's going to matter what George Perez says, and God knows. What's the news? What is it? Oh, he has a concussion. Oh. No. Rachel, our intern in Toronto, says Evans has a concussion out indefinitely. Uh, Wow, that's, yeah, the news of the suspension hasn't come out, but the injury has. So are we moving on from Shifley? Well, the last thing on that, it just can't, what it reminds me of when you said his kind of deer in the headlights afterwards, and he's, you know, it's like, You black out for a second. It's like, what did I do? I didn't mean I don't want to hurt anybody. But you're frustrated. It's like in tennis, we've seen this a couple of times in tennis, where they're really mad and they smash them. Remember when he hit him in the throat with Djokovic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? You're mad. You don't you're not trying to hit anybody in the throat, but you're mad. And then the or you smash a stick against the crossbar and the blade goes helicoptering into the crowd and hits a fan, right? It's the it's the unintended result, right? And unfortunately, I'm okay with him being suspended. Totally. I'm, but can you understand that I say he didn't intend for this to happen? I just hear me screaming that little voice 
Nobody understands. Yeah. Uh, from Sean McCormick in the Game Plus studios in downtown Toronto. Paris hasn't been consistent lately, so it's hard to tell. I will say he will get one game. If it was a blatant headshot or blatant intent to injure, would be different. Unfortunate outcome. And that's the thing. Thank you, Sean, for injecting that. Paris, you can't ever predict what he's going to say, but I will predict two. Where's the comment from Ryan in uh, Saratoga, New York? He said, nice polo rod. There it is. Repping the East Coast Hockey League today. Thank you, Ryan, in New York for noticing. This came from the Newfoundland Growlers. Sent it to me. What I tell you, if you, the way to my heart is send me your hockey team's golf shirts. It's not through my stomach. I think they're still the defending Kelly Cup champions. I don't think they've handed out a... Still the champions. I think so. The Newfoundland Growlers yeah. sent me the gear. Uh, point two. And by the way, this is the warm-up for E. Cole Electric. I'll get to their liner in a moment, but let's get to work at E. Cole Electric. How about that? Colorado Avalanche beating the Vegas Golden Knights 3-2 in overtime last night. What, 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 what are we going to say? Did you stay up and watch that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, here it is. The warm-up brought to you by e Electric, your complete electrical distributor with locations in Regina, Estevan, Swift Current, Yorkton, and Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. e Electric, let's get to work. So what are you going to say? Vegas outshoots Colorado 41-25. I got my tweet ready to go to troll everybody with Mark andre Fleury thinking the Golden Knights are going to win, and they couldn't beat Philip Grubauer. Or as the broadcaster called him last night, Mark Grubauer. But whatever. Uh, Vegas had played a great game. They didn't bury their chances. They hit a lot of posts. And uh, they just missed opportunities a lot of times. And I'm like, it's the playoffs. You can't miss on opportunities. And not against these guys. So it gets to overtime. Very chintzy call, obviously, on Riley Smith, who I predicted would score the OT winner. No, he gets the penalty. And I'm like, really? Slashes the sticks out of Miko Rantanen's hands, which he didn't even really do that. I think Marc-Andre Fleury's going to have PTSD from trying to play goal against Colorado's power play. I know. I had it. Zing, 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 zing. Zing, 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 zing. Unbelievable. Try to defend that. You can't. There was a part of me last night that thought Nathan McKinnon is the most dangerous hockey player the National Hockey League has ever seen. Ever. Talk about he's got it all. So my point was, you get a chintzy power play, you, you kind of knew they were going to score. They do. It's now 3-2 Colorado going back to Vegas, and it's going to be very hard for the Golden Knights to get back in. I wanted to pick up my phone and tweet that Colorado's good enough. They don't need help from the refs. But I didn't. See how I'm maturing in my old age? I waited till this morning to say it. I was going to say it. Waited till this morning. I did see it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> They're good enough. They don't need help. But did you see Peter DeBoer after the game? He said, I'm not going to be mad at the refs. It was a soft call, but what are you going to do? They dropped their sticks. They're falling down all over the place. It's not the ref's fault. <laughs> can't find a guy for that. No, you can't. You know, it's pretty funny, but... Vegas played one heck of a game, but whether it was Riley Smith, Max Pacioretty, Alex Tuck, you know, in that third period in overtime, they had all the chances to end it. Mm -hmm. They had plenty of chances to end it. Philip Grubauer, you know, was on his head. Unbelievable. But that's what good Can't teams need. That. Yeah. You know, when your team's getting outplayed, and let's make no mistake, Colorado got outplayed last night in a big way by Vegas. Um, and this series is far from over because of what we've seen. But Grubauer stepped up. And you need that. When your team gets outplayed, you need a goaltender to bail you out and win a game. So to win a cup, that needs to happen. But this comes back down to, like, you know, a real shock of reality. Because we want to take a small, isolated incident and use that to determine massive, long, make big, long-term accusations and decisions, right? Game one happens. Colorado is so superior. They're not even in the same class. You know, Vegas isn't in their class. It's going to be over in four. And then you see last night's game. And it's completely the opposite. Well, I knew that was going to happen. Right? That's, Grubauer won the game. Grubauer Not won the, the game. Totally. The and it's the same thing with Shifley, right? You're taking one incident and characterizing the entire guy, right? You got to look at the big picture. From Farmer in Saskatchewan writing, boy, that narrows it down. <laughs> oh. uh, if you're going to complain about the stick slash, I'll complain about the Shea Theodore tripping call at or near the end of the third. 
There was stuff being let go. It's playoffs. That's, I, I'm not complaining about the call, nor was Peter DeBoer. It's a penalty. It's a penalty. Right? How do you get mad at that? It, you, it, it's actually a black and white call. So, Grubauer won the game. Not complaining about the officials might come back and be good karma for the Golden Knights when the series ships, uh, shifts back to Sin City on Friday. So, or Thursday. What is it? What day is today? Yeah, yeah Friday. Friday. Uh, anyways, we're <laughs> two points covered us through the whole warm-up here. Here's, here's the rest. The United States Football League is back. They announced it this morning. A lot of you won't remember, but I do. 1983 to 1985, the, the team that, that Doug Flutie played in and Steve Young and Herschel Walker and Donald Trump owned the team, the New Jersey uh, Generals, they're back. And they're going to start playing next spring. And now it just touched off a crap load of controversy and talk. Oh, the CFL's got leverage now against the XFL and all oh, the XFL this and the USFL. You know what my reaction to that was? Let's see one of them get on the field. Any one of them. And let's go from there. Because I'm still of the mindset, the more football, the better. I'll watch. But I'm not John Q. Public. Right? I'm not the average bear. So we'll, we'll unpack that a little later. Blue Jays sweep the Marlins. We got Mike Wilner, Wilner coming up later to talk about that. Jeff Cornwall is back. He signed a two-year deal with the Saskatchewan Rush. And, man, is there a great story about that? You were in the building when he won the champ or scored with 12 seconds to go to win the championship. Oh, yeah. I was then... watching it with Chris Jones in the luxury suite at Sastel Center. 12 seconds left in the deciding game of the Champions Cup final. Saskatchewan was playing. Who were they playing? New England? I think it was New England. Yeah. Whatever. Jeff Cornwall scores the winner to win the whole. <sighs> 15,000 goes nuts. Chris Jones turns to me and goes, how do you beat that? I think it was, how do you top that? Yeah. How do you top that? Unreal. <laughs> and it was their first year in Saskatchewan. First year, you know, the goal to win it. You know, it's not that you're up and the clock runs down. That's a winning the goal, goal to win it. With 12 seconds left. Like, unbelievable Jack stuff. Cornwall. That's what it was. I was in the stands. I wasn't covering the team yet, but then had a relationship. So down on the floor after they win, like, they, unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. How you top that? Point six, NBA playoffs we'll get to later on. This uh, has been the warm-up for E. Cole Electric. Let's get to work. Hustler joins us from Winnipeg Sports Talk next. You're watching the RP Show on Game Plus TV, YouTube and Facebook Live, and 24-hour sports radio for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.